All right, thank you everybody for coming to uh, the presentation, the keynote presentation, <laughs> How to Stuff Your Stuff Into Your Stuff by Packing for Packers. <laughs> I, my name is Ronnie Romance, oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, I don't have a website yet, but when I do, it'll be ronrom.com. So visit that and when you get a chance. Um, to my to my stage, to stage left or right, depending upon if you're a thespian, um, we have Martina Brimmer from Swift Industries. Hi. I'm sorry, Hillary, what's your last name? Washburn. Hillary Washburn from Orton. Um, and, uh, and then uh, let me reintroduce myself once more, the keynote speaker. I am, <laughs> I am Ronnie. Um, so we have, uh, uh, what we have for you here, I probably don't need this, this is just like a fun thing to talk into. Um, what we have here for you today is three unique different packing styles. Uh, I, I, a question I often get asked is, uh, how do I stuff my stuff into my stuff? Like verbatim, every time. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it really does come down to, like, what your touring style is, your personal preference, like what you like to take, what you consider comforts, you know. I've seen some people, um, you know, some people go, like, ultra-minimalism, <coughs> ultra-minimalist, like uh, Lael Wilcock, if you're familiar with her. She, uh, I've gone on tours with her, and she wakes up in the morning after she does uh, her, like, five-mile run. This is before anyone's even gotten up in the morning five mile run and then she's doing planks and then she'll come join us by the campfire where we're making our breakfast and you know I usually make like you know a, a pretty decent breakfast in the morning with porridge and a number of other uh, like coffees various coffees um, and Lael will just walk up to the campfire eating a lollipop and have her uh, her cold like instant coffee in her water bottle shakes it up and she's happy as a clam you know and so if that's like if that's like your thing if you don't care about comforts like you can get away with taking nothing with you you know and a lot of the time I like I tell people experiment with taking nothing and that's how you really find out what you need you know um, so <laughs> uh, you know depending upon you know what kind of tour I'm gonna do I'll be like well you know oftentimes it's just like the overnighter when you know you're not gonna be taking a lot of stuff you know, you're not going to be doing like high mileage. You're not going to be having to lug your bike uh, like in, through an airport and, or on a, in a bus or whatever, like things that you have to do when you quit a longer tour, which you inevitably do if you're me. Um, so, uh, you know, I, on, a, on like an overnighter, I'll, I'll tend to take way more than I would take on even like a month-long trip, you know, because you can afford to take all of those luxuries with you, the cast iron skillet, the, the, the fondue set, you know, uh, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> So um, uh, without further ado, I guess we'll, uh, we'll, we'll start uh, kind of going over these different setups. We have uh, this, this would be my setup here with my uh, two uh, Fabio's chests. Um, if you haven't heard about them, the chests are the best. Um, and uh, this would be uh, uh, Martina's setup with a little bit more of a traditional, uh, like four paneers, like probably what you're used to seeing, like a classic touring bike. And then Hillary has a little bit more of a, if we take these racks off, these racks had to be on here, yep. on here because of tubas. Well, no. no these this, aren't tubas racks? They are. Okay. But this bike sold with these racks, so, but normally we would not have these racks while you're using this yeah, setup. This setup yeah. It is so, a rackless bag system. Right, right. So this would be, if you just kind of like pretend you didn't see these racks, like this right, this right here would be like, exist. yeah, they don't exist. <laughs> the racks that are holding nothing. This yeah. is the this is the minimalist setup. So we're gonna go over these like three different packing styles. This would be like your little bit more of a like bring the fondue set kind of thing, and uh, that joke landed the first time, not the second. Time. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then this would be the minimalist, and this would be somewhere in between. <laughs> so uh, say that louder. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Why don't we start like heavy? You want to? Yeah, let's go heavy. Okay, cool. Martina, Martina Bremer, everyone. <laughs> Maybe first I'll introduce myself. I'm Martina Brimmer. Um, I am the co-founder and owner of Swift Industries. We're a bag company out of Seattle, Washington. There are a couple of things that make us pretty unique uh, as a company. 
Number one, all of our bags are designed and produced by an in-house team. Um, well, I should say certainly designed and developed as an in-house team, and then all of our products are made right in King County uh, in Seattle. So, um, yeah, people don't do that anymore. Um, so when you come to Swift Industries, you would walk in the doors to a kind of like newer, small factory um, where you would find a showroom that has become an incredible hub for adventure cyclists to come through. We have at least 200 people come every summer who are on bike tour um, and pop in and often that's a homecoming for the bags that we've supplied for them. Um, and we've got accessories and camp gear and anything that we can do to support folks as they're traveling. Um, and it has also become an incredible cultural and community hub for our local cycling communities. So that's what's up in Seattle. Please come visit us. We love having folks come. We'll give you a tour of all of our sewing machines. And um, yeah, it's a, just a really unique experience. So um, this is, full disclosure, not my bicycle, but it is like uncannily similar to the bike that I ride at home. Um, I don't have, I started off riding with a pretty tr like traditional Soma Saga uh, touring bike, and I'm a bicycle monogamist, so I basically want my bicycle to, one bicycle to do the vast majority of my work for me. Um, the only other bike I have is a full suspension mountain bike, which does like a whole other wealth of things. But for my commuting and for my bike touring, whether it's on gravel, on very light single track, or on pavement, I basically have a bike that looks almost identical to this. Um, and I set it up actually quite differently depending on those things that I just mentioned. The different terrain, uh, the topography that I'll be going through. Uh, certainly if it's a hillier route, we all know that going a little lighter is advantageous. Um, but let's say that I am heading out on gravel roads um, for perhaps a shorter tour, three or four days a week, um, then I would absolutely jump in with this kind of a setup. Um, so I've got a couple of considerations, especially, I'm going to talk first about the bike because I think that the bike is the foundation for good packing. Um, my bicycle, I'm not totally sure about this bike, but my bicycle has a low trail fork on it, and so it kind of comes alive in a slightly different way with the weight on the front. And you will see, if you follow Swift Industries, you will see that we have a severe bias towards bags in the front of our bicycles. And that is usually the biggest question that folks send us, is <coughs> what is going on with that? And for me, it is very simply the difference between like, pulling your load along or pushing it along. And I think that it feels way more efficient for me to push it. But that the caveat to that is that my bike is to de designed to do so. Um, so it's in part because of that low trail fork that um, my stability is just, my handling is made way more st stable. I can point my wheel and it'll go exactly where I anticipate it's gonna go with the weight in the front. Um, so, this is maybe a little bit more of a realistic snapshot of what I would typically be touring with. Um, though every once in a while I will put on four whole panniers. <laughs> so in the front I've got Junior Ranger panniers here and a sugar loaf basket bag. Because my bike handles well with the vast majority of the weight in the front, I would probably concentrate things like my food and heavier items to the front. I get like a pretty good shape, a uh, wobble, if I have too much weight up high um, because I'm very tall and I have a very long uh, headset and stem situation in the front. So as much as I can drop my weight lower, um, the better my steering is, which over the miles means that my body is way happier, both all the way from my hips all the way down to my neck and my shoulders because I'm just... Uh, working with much more predictable steering and it takes way less energy, especially if you're in the saddle eight hours a day. Um, up front, I often will carry some sort of a front bag um, that just has like the stuff that I want access to throughout the day. 
that can be cameras, snacks, repair kit, um, more snacks, rain kit, rain gear. Um, and I just love that I can, I like, I always am looking for a situation where I can just open my bag really easily on the move. Um, and that's that. It, I don't have to fumble through things. Uh, that's really a huge difference for me between the Junior Rangers which have a roll compression, I have to stop, I have to get off my bike to get my stuff. What I want in the front is really just something that opens up super easily. I can grab my stuff and just keep moving. Um, in my situation, again, this is geometry dependent, um, then I would go a little bit lighter in the back. Um, and those things may be things like my tent and my sleeping gear and stuff like that. Um, less food, pots and pans in the back. Um, this even is a kind of higher capacity uh, setup than I would go with. Um, but one of the things that uh, we are seeing really clearly in the bikepacking uh, industry in general is that as the outdoor industry is innovating smaller and smaller gear, our bags like the demand for our bags and what you guys are asking for is getting smaller and smaller as well. And it's super exciting to me. So uh, folks who are used to seeing, you know, uh, really, really wide bags and another bag up here and all of this stuff are like, well, where do you have all of your gear? Over like a lot of time, piece by piece, I have started to invest in smaller and smaller gear and made myself a kit that um, really does easily fit into this entire setup. Um, should we take questions now or after after? Yeah, we should wait till after after. Okay. Yeah, because it will be blended. Okay. Yeah. Um, MC, have I missed anything that you feel is critical? <laughs> I, I think I yeah you. you Hit on a lot of key points here with the uh, with like low trail geometry and front loading. Like yeah, again, like tons of questions on that because most people, I think, with uh, like the more traditional setups are used to seeing. Uh, this will tie in Hortley up here too. But like whenever I'm touring internationally, especially, or if I meet somebody from Europe who's touring in the U.S., their classic like setup is uh, some obscure German brand bike with the butterfly bars, uh, the four Hortley. Like, how big are your biggest panniers? Um, <laughs> 72 liters or two of them? Yeah, so. It's a lot. So, so yeah, like 140 liters worth of paneers. Yeah, and, then, and then that big uh, roll sack. Yeah, we have our, like, <coughs> rack sack that's, like, 31 right, liters. Right, right. I, I helped the, uh, well, I'm getting off the point. I won't even go into that story. They can but carry so, a lot of stuff. They can carry a lot of stuff. And so, uh, I think, like, in generally, the, like, a, a rule of thumb is, like, like if you, if you put the, the like the, the carrying capacity on your bike, like your chances are you're going to be tempted to use it. You totally. Know? And so you're like, if you start off with your with the traditional touring setup and you have all of these bags and 140 liters just in your panniers, uh, then you're going to fill it and then your bike is going to be ridiculously heavy, and it's going to adversely affect your you know your your tour. Absolutely, you know you're you're going to be breaking more spokes. You're going to wear out your tires quicker. You, axles break, all these things that, that happen when you're touring with a load that heavy. Yeah, I see time and time again, I see a lot of people still still doing that sort of setup. And with a lot of the routes like moving more towards gravel and off of the paved surfaces like that, it becomes more and more important that you have a, a like Martina was saying, that you that you invest in a kit that packs down to next to nothing. You know, you, the, the smaller you can get like your actual kit, which by that I mean like your sleep system, your jackets and your clothes and things like that. The more room you have for food and water, and that's really what's important out there. Because you can stay out for a lot longer without having to dip into some shitty gas station for, you know, for marshmallows. Sorry, Matt. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very shaming. much against yeah, that. Yeah, I'm shame in I tore Whole Foods to Whole Foods, so it's uh, I gotta make it. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so I, you know, it's important to think like when you're thinking about a setup, like a traditional setup like that, do I actually need, you know, um, like five changes of clothes, like street clothes, like four pairs of shoes? Because I often wonder, I'm like, man, like what's in there? What's in here? Because I, I oftentimes feel like with this setup that I'm traveling luxuriously, 
And so, yeah, just think about, just thinking about that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, no, I think yeah, I think we definitely do. We'll, we'll ask questions afterwards, like we said. So if you have any, save it in your brain. We'll, we'll get to that. Um, okay. Martina. <laughs> So we'll move on to somewhere in the middle uh, with, with Ronnie set up here. Um, this is uh, um, so ordinarily uh, I would have uh, a frame bag in the middle here, and I would have uh, something more than just like a flannel in the front. That's all that's in here. This, we don't actually have anything in our bags right now, so really lightweight setup. Um, <laughs> Um, so uh, these are these are um, some bags that I designed that were based off of uh, uh, like traditional saddle bags like um, like Caradice and Brooks have been making for over a hundred years and these were just like upgrades that I saw fitting to make the bags a little bit more modern and still, still giving it that classic aesthetic and something that I really like about um, this bag system over say like a really minimalist lightweight setup is that these are bags like you leave on your bike. And uh, you can you can go to the grocery store with them. You don't have to take them off after you know they're they're functional bags outside of just bike touring and bike packing. And so so it's uh, uh, important to me that while I'm on the bike touring or just like riding around town that my stuff is easily accessible. And so uh, having bags that are these bags uh, generally this bike has a rack on it, but the bag's not necessarily using the rack. Uh, I like to have my my bikes set up rack list because I do a lot of disassembly for international travel or even domestic travel when you have to get it on a train or on the bus or in, you know in, uh, inside a bike box to put on a plane and so not having racks and having your bike as like simple as possible and like not a lot of components that you like hard components that you have to unscrew and like the, the fewer like bolts that you can lose like in your bike box along the way always like really really nice um, uh, nice pluses when you're dealing with the stress of traveling in the first place and so um, so having a bike that's uh, you know that's rackless and having your gear that's lightweight yet still having it be uh, still like carrying over a little bit of like the accessibility that you get with like the floor pannier setup like the really something that's really nice about the floor pannier setup is you don't have to stuff your stuff as much so you, know, you wake up in the morning you're like oh my sleeping bag I'm just gonna put it right in this thing or, you know. Whereas if when you're dealing with like something a little bit more uh, lightweight, you have to end up using a lot of stuff sacks and things like that. And so what I found uh, is most important for me is that in the like, I like to ride a traditional geometry bicycle. This is being a traditional geometry level top two as opposed to like a sloping top two bike. Um, these two are traditional geometry just because you have this giant triangle, you know. And so this giant giant triangle being you know, right you know, in between the axles. And so you have uh, uh, your center of gravity can, can kind of stay in between the two wheels and something when you're loading up your, your larger bags with heavier things like food and water, mainly water, as we know water is the heaviest thing you have to carry. Um, that when you, if you could put it, you know, in the center of the bike, you don't feel it at all. Like it just, and you'll feel it if you try to lift your bike up, but you want to concentrate your heavy items in the center and down with <coughs> Know, you're not going to feel it at all. Like I could put seven liters of water in my, you know, within my frame bag in those platypus bladders, and uh, and you know, there's very little difference in the way the bike handles and rides, whether whether there's seven liters of water in there or if it's totally empty. So um, I always so heavy heavy things in the center, and then in the rear bag, I'll put my sleep system. I'll put my tarp, my um, my sleeping bag. So I put in there. I'll put in my sleep clothes. Generally, uh, I'll either use a silk liner or I'll pack um, like a set of uh, like wool long johns and, and, uh, and a wool top, a merino wool that I'll sleep in. Uh, my pillow, um, my uh, cucumber mask, <laughs> a cold mask. The cucumbers don't keep so well. Um, and uh, yeah, cold cream. Uh, and then <laughs> in the side pockets, I'll keep, I do, this, this is not a lot, yeah, I'll keep a, my hairbrush. What else do I keep in there? I'll keep, yeah, various essential oils that I put in, you know, it's certain things that you figure out that keep you clean on the road when you're not actually getting wet with a shower or something. Dry showers is where it's at. Uh, so, you know, toiletries, uh, just easy accessible things in these side pockets. Uh, so uh, I can keep everything that I need to actually like camp back here. 
Um, and then up front, <laughs> it leaves a bunch of room. Like I said, I tour Whole Foods to Whole Foods, so sometimes you go like a week without a Whole Foods. The horror. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so I end up using this whole front bag for my, uh, for, for, I have like a two liter pot, a titanium pot, and like my stove that fits inside that. Um, and then I'll put uh, a bunch of food in there um, and anything else that I'll need like really quick. Like uh, my, my down jacket, oftentimes I'll just kind of like stuff in here because uh, oftentimes you'll be going on like a long climb and get hot and then you got to descend, so you got to get that jacket on. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that tends, for me, that tends to balance out everything really nicely. Uh, my, the rear end ends up weighing just as much as the front, and then you have the, again, you have the real heavy stuff in the center, and that's, I found that that's just the best, best way for me to pack for, for my needs. And I, I've got a few other bikes, like, a, like my, um, my expedition bike that I'll take out in the desert, and uh, the whole, like, the purpose for designing something like that is something that you can go out for a week without having to actually fill up on water. So it can hold 15 liters of water in the, in the frame bag. I don't know how much that weighs, but I, I filled it up once just on an overnighter to see what it felt like. And even with 15 liters of water in the frame bag, like the bike handles just, as, just the same as it does. If anything, you have more traction because you, you, <laughs> you have 15 liters of water just keeping the wheels planted at all times. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that would be like, Middle weight, stuffing your stuff into your stuff. Um, I don't think I have anything else to hit on there. So, Hillary is going to come up now. Hillary Washburn, everyone. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, so, yeah, we're at the World League USA. We're based out of um, about 25 miles south of Seattle in Auburn, Washington. Um, but every, all the bags are still designed and made in Germany. Everything is actually made and welded there. So everything is very literally named because of that. So here we have the seat pack, the frame pack, cockpit pack, handlebar pack, and accessory pack. So pretty easy to remember. And we have a couple different sizes. These two are our smaller sizes that <coughs> fit into the drop bars here. We have a bigger one for longer trips or flat bars um, on any bike that you have a flat bar on. So just like they both touched on already, a lot of it depends on this setup especially, is where you put your items, especially weighted. Um, that's the question we always get is like, where do you, these bags don't look like they hold anything. And uh, last year I actually had it where it was like these Mary Poppins bags where I pulled everything out that we had packed and it was pretty awesome. And it hits that point too where it is an investment to get new gear because especially with a setup like this, you need to have compact, lightweight, camping here because it's not going to fit any other way. Like I even have a seven year old Mont Bell bag. It fills up the whole 16 and a half liter seat pack. Like that's not functional, right? So because that takes up a lot of space. Um, one of the brands that I've used a lot that I like is Exped. If anyone's familiar, it's a little bit more pricey, but they make really nice lightweight uh, equipment. So the way I like to pack these um, is I like to put the tent like, like here without poles or anything. You just, crinkle it up, shove it here, and then some clothes. Anything really soft in the back. We really recommend no heavy things back here because we get the womp sad banana that we call it or the happy puppy dog tail um, <laughs> while you're riding. And those are things we want to avoid because then, especially when you're out of the saddle climbing and you feel that weight, just like if you have really heavy back panniers, I mean, it's just, it's going to swing you around a lot and that's <coughs> really good. Um, and one of the features that we have on our bag, you can't, really see from over here, but there's an air valve over here that opens up, because if you see so you're in here getting your stuff out, and then you try to, I mean, that's not good, and then you have a lot of extra air in here, and then if anything shifts and moves, and you get spaces, and that's when you get that issue of all the movement. Um, and then when you open this up, though, you get to really compress it out. And there's an air bladder in here, but pretty much we call it like one of those like compact coffee ground bags that you get, and everything's just really tight in there. And you can just cinch the crap out of it. And it you stays fill that with wine also, like a boat bag. Yeah, you can just like open that up and just like chug it all if you need to. <laughs> um, we actually, this one you say that, so our uh, frame pack has a waterproof zipper over here uh, from T-Zip. And 
we had somebody that had some beer explode in theirs once, so they just they just opened it a little bit and like drank it out of the bag. So no beer was wasted. Um, so yeah, so just lightweight compressible things in the back here. Uh, I might even put like a little little camping pillow and stuff. And same thing in the frame pack. If you have space, uh, recently I just did a pretty cold weather camping in Montana, and I didn't really have space for the water. But if it's you have space, the water definitely is better here. And same thing, um, like Benedict was saying, like anything heavy, definitely put down here because you're not going to feel it as much. And especially don't put it up here if you can avoid that. And if anything is bulky, maybe just down in the nose of the seat pack, just because that's where it's going to be the least wobbly. Um, like in here, I had my uh, sleeping pad, <coughs> cup, you know, heavier stuff down there for a while. Um, and yeah, but water, anything like that. And then we have different size frame packs as well. Different size bikes, and if you are so lucky to have height on your side and have space, you sometimes can fit a water bottle cage underneath the frame pack. I don't have that luxury on my bike, so. Um, and then some people like these. These are the quick access if you need to chapstick, snack, if you have a little phone, unless you have like one of the tablet phones or something. Doesn't really fit in there. But yeah, so a quick access little cockpit pack in the front. I like to put my sleeping bag up here, and again, if you get a small enough one. Like I have a 25 degree X bed uh, down, and it fits. This is a smaller bag, and it takes up about a little more than three quarters of it, so I can still fit uh, maybe some like a sleeping clothing or something in here and just crunch it down. And then it keeps it really lightweight up front because, uh, like Martina was saying, anything heavy, like up this high and really heavy, is going to be really awkward to steer, and especially if you like to maybe take your hand off the bar or whatever for any amount of time, really uncomfortable, especially on the big baby head off-road or something like that. It's just not going to ride that well. And the accessory pack up here is another quick access. Um, this is what I like to use, wallet, phone, food. It comes with a nice um, belt to wear it like a side satchel bag if you want to wear it like a little hip pack, which is pretty cool. A very German thing to think about. Um, but it's, it is really functional. And then you can actually use this by itself as well. It has little straps so you can strap this thing on the bar if you don't want to use the big um, handlebar bag. And like I said, if this would not have racks, uh, if you have a fork, you can. A lot of times for water, we like to put like the anything cages there and carry water maybe low um, in the front, because like Martina said, it handles really well low in the front like that. I had to do something a little more funky where I had one of the you know, Revelate Design feed bags and I had an algae in there and that was kind of awkward because it was kind of heavy but it was the only place I had to have water and I had two of them and then I couldn't really climb out of my bike but it's where I had my water and like uh, saying water is the most important thing that you probably need on a trip like this but um, it is possible to do winter camping and summer camping on this and usually for clothing I only bring a couple extra chamois and base layers and then I wear the same like outer outfit the rest of the time because those are the only two parts that I think. I, I mean we've all had nasty chamois and that's not cool <laughs> to have a nasty chamois for a few days so yeah it's pretty much all I pack for clothes because everything else is pretty much essentials on a on an outfit like this but yeah that's pretty much the minimal setup there. Thank you Billy. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, really, the, 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 the big choice between, like, these three, like, packing styles is just how much stuff you're going to bring. Like, it's, uh, I, you know, I, I take it for granted how often that we get to, that we, like, bike tour and things like that, and that it's, it's our, our lifestyle. But for a lot of people, this is, like, their one, like, weekend per year that they're going to go out and, and, like, enjoy this, like, wonderful, incredible thing that we get to do. Uh, bike touring and you know just immerse yourself in nature and just kind of disconnect from whatever you know you know whatever's making you sick in real life and uh, uh, so you want it to make it well you want to make it like you want to make it a good experience and so just getting the right information on this kind of stuff and understanding like what kind of trip you're doing first off looking at the elevation profiles um, you know asking a friend if they've already done the route like oh what's this like like is there going to be a bunch of spots where I have to carry my bike is it going to be a lot of pushing? How rideable is it? Like these are all variables that you want to take into consideration before you decide like which setup is going to work best for you. Uh, uh, one thing that I left out of, of what you know, with my setup, I like to be able to if I can lift the bike over my head like this. That's the if I can't do that, my bike's too heavy. 
because inevitably you're going to have to do this, uh, you know, at least once per trip, if not like five times per day, you know, at the worst, ten times per day at the very worst. But that really gets it really gets old having to disassemble your bike every like wrong turn you make and fence you have to hop into somebody's yard that says I shoot before I ask questions. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, you know, take that into consideration. Um, uh, what else? I guess you, you guys have anything else you want want to add before we ask for questions or anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, uh, uh, again, like like uh, Hillary was saying, it's really anything more. I feel like anything more than the one outfit that you're going to be wearing while you're riding. And this was like a big, uh, actually, it was life changing for me to rediscover uh, like a Brooks style hammock saddle. Like later in. After, my, after I was like a road racer and thought I had to wear a chamois every time I rode a bike uh, and clip in every time I had to wear a bike, was like this was like the epiphany. Like, oh, I could sit on this Brook saddle, which was designed before chamois were even a thing, and I could just wear my regular clothes. Like, wow, this is incredible. Like, I don't have to wear the outfit to go on a bike ride. I could just walk into my garage, grab my bike, and go on a ride, you know? And so, like, carrying that over to bike touring, like, I only have to pack the clothes that I am going to wear, you know, my normal clothes. And I could wear those riding, I could wear those off the bike. I don't look like a freak when I pull up to some gas station in middle America where they want to, you know, where who knows what they think when, like, someone walks up, like, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so you, you end up having, like, you end up having more, like, easy interactions with people who would ordinarily be totally turned off to, like, like, you know, whatever you're doing out there for, you know, for the wrong reasons, of course, but still, you know, it, it makes, for me, it makes traveling, like, in places where they're not used to seeing cyclists a little bit so that one outfit, you don't have to, so I, I have the one outfit that I wear, maybe like one change of wool underwear, and, uh, and then like the clothes you sleep in. And, um, and so like anything beyond that, I feel is, is excess. Uh, you have your like down jacket that you're gonna wanna wear at night, because it always gets cold at night no matter where you are. And um, like, a, like, a rain, like a rain shell, and yeah, and that's really, it's really all you need and everything else is just extra. Uh, you'll find like if you go out with just that, you'll be like, wow, I don't even, I only need one outfit in my whole life. This is great. You know, laundry? Yeah, just keep wearing it. <laughs> and also because they're, if you choose something that's not synthetic, it won't stink either. It depends on who you are and what you ate for dinner. But really, for the most part, your stuff won't stink if you, if you wear all natural fibers. So that's another thing to take into consideration when you're going lightweight. Like, think about how much laundry you're going to have to do. A lot of people will bring multiple chamois because you can't wear a chamois more than like two, like two, three days in a row, you're really pushing some sort of sepsis down there. <laughs> yeah, it's bad, bad news. But you know, if you're just wearing little underwear, you just keep on wearing it. It's just, it's just no big deal. Uh, but you got to have a, a Brooks style saddle for that. Um, yeah, one thing I wanted to add was um, planning the route because, like, we had, like I said, I was able to get away with just like a Nalgene and a Hydro Flask water bottle because in Montana, that we had a lot of natural flowing water. So that was nice where we, no one had to fill up their frame pack with bladders because we just brought really compact water purifiers and even then I don't think we need to purify the water up where we were but you do it anyways because that's the best time waiting to happen um but yeah so knowing the route like that was great we didn't have to carry like going to the desert but a little compact water purifier like one of them uh, one of the gals had a one of the catanides that you fill and then squeeze it through the cap and then I have one of the UV with the filter thing I mean but those are so tiny and light that Finding a good water purifier is like one of your key staple yeah. items I would highly recommend. <laughs> so, yeah, that was one thing I kind of forgot that is a necessity within this system and all the systems. But also, I'm not against going to a gas station or wherever if that person went that we made fun of. I'm totally, I'm totally on board with my, 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 so junk, my junk food and my Snickers and whatever. Go get your water in there. I'm not about that. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, me. only Fiji. No, I don't yeah. need Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, any questions? Start the questions over here. Um, if I were a thief, I think I'd look at this stuff and salivate. Uh, what, you know, it's bad enough the bicycles are stolen, but um, what can you do to make it difficult for someone, you know, when you're parked? 
to uh, walk off with all of your cash. I make it really heavy. <laughs> yeah, it makes it feel good. It's good to <laughs> Yeah, I'll tend to do a lot of, well, I, uh, when I'm touring alone, I really push the boundaries as to where I can bring my bike. Like, I'll just wheel it right into the grocery store. And, uh, you know, there's just too many, like, horror stories out there of, you, of people, like, on long tours walking out and having their whole life, like, it's gone, you know? And, and so, um, you know, things that, like, maybe I'll always park it in a place where I can really, like, keep an eye on it, where it's, like, in public and not, like, or hidden, but I'll, I'll take like cinch straps, you know, like the, the bole straps or like uh, or like toe straps, and you know I'll I'll like you know put put a toe strap in here, toe strap in there, like hidden. So if they try and like wheel it away, they just eat shit right away. And uh, and things like these paneers are easy to take off. You know, it's just a, a system where you're like this if you need to take them. Uh, same with same with the same with these bags. It's just a velcro. And so you could you could take it with you if you're concerned with that. Um, but you know there really is no better system of touring with a buddy and leaving that and going into the store one at a time. And when I'm touring with my partner Nam, that's what we do. We just always make sure somebody's with the bikes. It's just not worth. It's not. It's never worth leave, just leaving your bike out there. And uh, they do make some pretty cool compact locks uh, now. What's the what are the ones in Portland? Uh, I can't recall. They're like these cool, like kind of strap locks, which I mean, you, you wouldn't want to like. Q lock or something? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, they're pretty neat. You wouldn't want to like use it every day, like in an those urban Those are super cool. Yeah. But they're super cool. They don't yeah. weigh a lot, and it's going to deter uh, you know, probably ninety percent of bike thieves yeah. unless they're. We all because you with all this stuff on your bike. Mm -hmm. Where do you where are you going to put the U lock? Well, it's, it's not a U lock. It's like a little like a strap cool. lock. Yeah, it's like yeah. a little coil, like almost like a heavy duty zip tie yeah, yeah, type yeah. thing. Yeah. So. It weighs about a pound. How do you lock your bike with all this stuff? I think that's so funny. I don't know if I've ever locked my bike ever, using yeah. this. Yeah. Well, especially to gauge this stuff on a gravel bike, you, like we're in the middle of freaking nowhere. Um, yeah. But grocery store, I just think I usually have we usually have a buddy system. Yeah. And somebody always is with the yeah, bike. Think, yeah, right. It really isn't. So, I don't know. Yeah, and that's what we kind of lost it with or the end thing. Everyone's heard it, right? Oh, I got all my stuff stolen. Like I don't know. Yeah, we have these little cables, but again, they're like tiny clips. Yeah, it's buddy system more than anything. And also making like in. like when you're when you like pull up on like a Ferrari of bikes like like you're like you know if you if your bike is just like boom 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 and it's drawing attention to people just by a, you know I try to I try to make like all the colors really dulled and um, you know I never like if my bike is going to get scratched or rusted I just let it get scratched or rusted I feel like it tells the story of the bike anyway but just you know don't pay a lot of attention to how shiny and like and like <laughs> fancy your bike looks when you're touring. Like make it look like a, a thief would just pass right by. Unless you really know what you're looking looking for. Like if you're somebody who's sitting in this audience right now, you know, you're not gonna know what you have. You know, for the most part they're looking for things that are a little bit more polished and shiny. That's just the little things that you want to keep you know, keep take into consideration when you're when you're buying your gear and things like that. That's why I was it's a good question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so with the Fabio's chest, the, it looks like it has a pretty large capacity, but it's mm -hmm. it, there's no frame. Is there an internal frame on them? Yeah, it's a uh, it's so we have a um, everything here is pretty space aged. Um, so the the roll top extends this. What's the exact liters, Martina? It's infinite, really. That's the space. <laughs> <laughs> And the, the flap the flap extends so that you technically you know if you want to if you want to pack I've seen people like with this just leave it out. Pack, they, no they'll pack it up to like this they'll pack it up to like this big like front and rear and then this can go over the top I always I always left this on here because in case you want to put a bunch of logs right here for your fire but is there internal support there is a yeah it is it is um, has a rigid body okay and so that's that's one of the tricks to make it. Uh, I started uh, mounting um, uh, caradices in the front, and uh, and the biggest, uh, you know, if you didn't have it full of stuff, it would just kind of sag and droop into the frame. It wouldn't stand stand out right. So with the rigid body, that was a, a really nice um, design aha moment when you could put in the rigid body. And, and uh, Martina and I co-designed these bags, and so when we were figuring this all out, it was really like new and exciting. We're like, 
go, you know, that we can make something that is essentially, you know, rackless and something that works much like the really, really lightweight uh, back, uh, bike packing setups, but still <coughs> makes it accessible and functional to use in like your everyday life also. And, and if you have uh, cantilevers, will it knock into the... So if you're, if you're using cantilevers, they, they sell these neat little, um, these, uh, uh, they mount on your floor crown. <coughs> Uh, it's uh, so your uh, so your your your, your uh, housing would extend all the way down to your floor crown, and it would allow you to put it up right up against the side. Or you can use V brakes, which is continuous housing all the way there. Yeah. Or you can just have it sitting on one of the racks. Uh, there's ways you can lower the bag down so it sits right on the rack and it keeps it away from the front. Then you have some place to mount your light, which is, can be difficult. <laughs> Accessibility of that, and I just can't get my head around the, the quote unquote bike packing handlebar yeah. bag. Mm -hmm. Mostly because I, every time I see them, they seem to be strapped directly to the head tube. Mm -hmm. And are these cyclists getting new paint jobs every six months? Like, yeah. is it just accepting that it's yeah, part of it's the bike? Yeah, it's accepting. That's the first, that's when you're going to be traveling on your bike. Like, I, I like to think that the, that like the, the days of like, Polishing your bike with a diaper are over, and uh, and and every like scratch, nick, and dent on your bike like tells a story. Like, like you're like, oh, that's where. All right, I had this bag on my bike for a month, and I was riding in Morocco or whatever. And yeah, it's worn all the way down to the steel, and I'll always have this there. To remember. I just wanted to last time <laughs> uh, congratulate you on the uh, sugar loaf. I think that's a genius oh, bag. Thanks so much. Um, that's so sweet of I, you. We have a shop. We haven't sold a ton of them just because we were in a small town in Canada. But um, the idea that they can buy a thirty-dollar wall basket and get out to the city is really nice. Yeah, I yeah. love it, and we can't take credit for that. That's a lot of other people. Oh, I, I realize you know? it's a particularly nice one. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but bas I feel similarly. I think that basket packing is like ingenious. It makes things really accessible. Infinite, infinite <laughs> <laughs> um, I can go. Um, when we have our larger pack, so like the larger frame pack and the larger seat pack, it ends up being about um, the size of two four two twenty liter panniers total. And then the smaller one's going to be about um, thirty three, thirty four liters total. Yeah. So that's why, like, it's creative space, but it ends up being about two large panniers just spread out differently. So I think it's nice if it helps you visualize the space. Yeah, but it's uh, it's deceiving, like because this guy itself is 11. This is also rolled in, but like, this can go up to 11 liters. Uh, this is six liters. Oh man, you're testing me on some of this stuff here. Um, a lot of numbers. <laughs> yeah, this one goes to I think it holds like seven liters all rolled in or something, five, something like that, and then this one's. Ah, anyway, so it ends up being about 30 or 33 yeah. liters, I guess. So. But yeah, the big ones are like 39 <coughs> in total. Yeah. And for context, I think this is about 80, the yeah. entire system. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's crazy, like, sorry, um, some of these big bags, like, you take a sedan car, like, on a big, like, it's the size of, like, what you could fill your trunk with, so, like, it's a lot of stuff, like, yeah. the huge, like, one, like, a lot of European people are using a lot of huge. Yeah. yeah. At times where I'll, I'll, I like helped a, a, a German. It's a Charles German. <laughs> too easy to make fun of. <laughs> I have German ancestry. Yeah. <laughs> so, and like you know, you'll have to like lift up the rear of your bike to to you know to work on the you know to like shift gears or when you're working on the chain or something. You can't even lift the rear end of your bike up. You know, that's just not that's not an enjoyable time. So you know, like you could fit everything you need to fit in here without a doubt. It's just a matter of, I, I stress to people with these types of bags, especially if you're touring with somebody who's going to be following behind you, if you were to extend this to 11 liters, is that what it is? This one's only a 
the okay. 16 and a half 16 one and a half. Like, if you're going to use something like that, yeah. like do it all if you're riding alone. And no one's going to see you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, I, I, like there's, there are a few things like that, that like, you know, <laughs> you're like, oh, poor me. But you ruin a trip where somebody's riding in front of you and all you're watching all day long is this thing going, just oh wagging God. like limp bone. You pack it right. <laughs> you pack it right. It should do that. No, they always wag. This is this is this is great. No, no bigger than this. Yeah, like no if you have to go bigger than this, then then think of a different setup because that's just not. Just don't do it. This is really the, this is really the, the stuffing side. And the cool yeah, thing yeah. Um, thing with, that we like with our bags is that it's all waterproof, so you don't need extra dry sacks. Like you literally can just stuff it all in the bag and then close it. And then Bruce? Yeah, question on, uh, especially with smaller planes, if, you, if you're using a frame bag, obviously you don't have room for bottle cages. Uh, and I know you mentioned that you use two pockets on yeah. the side of the stem. Any of you ever use hydration packs? I know if you watch the films of the GDR, you know, Rick Vibrates, yeah. most of them have some kind of a backpack as well. Do you, any of you use that? I, I mean, I don't like riding with them myself. I do when I have to. I think that's pretty much it. It's if you have to, it's the best option for a lot of water. Like if this is full for the liters of water you need, I highly recommend a bag. Like it's not hydration. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just saying if you think I just did it that way, you can say we had a lot of water sources, so I didn't yeah. need to do it, but if we didn't I would have had a had to have a yeah, as far as filtering goes, if you've had Giardia once, you'll filter your water. Every time. <laughs> They're saying, I didn't want to go there, so we, really yeah, we filtered anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, need, if you need to die, it's great. You'll lose yeah, a lot really of weight really fast. Yeah, yeah. So, no, that's a good thing. Like, my fork on, um, I was using a Mozzie, but it's more their um, gravel racing series, so it's a carbon fork, so they had no mounts on that. Yeah. On that. Although they're making it now, carbon forks with the mounts. They are. Mine was not, had, did not have that, but... Uh, but no, I highly recommend you have a backpack. It's like not ideal. Like I said, no one really, I don't love it, but it's a great I, way to I had a gear one. question also. And, and one comment about letting your bike get heat up. <laughs> On a four month tour, I carried a bottle of Schwinn Bicycle Wax, and I waxed my bike every month. So, but aside from that, uh, rain gear. I know, uh, Ronnie. In the past, you said you like to use a sil nylon uh, poncho rather yeah, than yeah, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. an actual rain suit or rain gear. What about the two of you? Well, I live in Seattle. Yeah, we both are in the Northwest. <laughs> yeah, um, I actually love rain pants and a rain jacket. And honestly, like I run pretty cold. I think a lot of yeah, women do. In the rain, especially. Yeah, and even if it's not raining, that is like those are two articles of clothing that will bring my core temp up really fast. Even if I'm in the mountains and it's not raining, I'll put them on. And they are also amazing mosquito repellents because the mosquitoes can't get through the Gore Tex. Yeah. Okay, so, so lots using of experience with the Gore Tex. Coated, and you're using like a yeah, just like a, yeah. yeah, totally Gore Tex, whatever. I think I have like LL Bean once from like 18 years ago. And I've used like the light shells, but as we know, like they work well, but then they get like pouring, they eventually don't yeah. rub off. So, but yeah, I'm with her. I, I like the jacket and the pants, but then and then like layers underneath. Yeah, yeah, that's my go-to. Oh, the poncho, poncho all the way. I, I've never ponchoed, so I can't speak so to changed, that. Changed my life, just like the saddle. Or rain pants around camp too for warmth. Yeah, yeah, warm. exactly. It's, it's, it's seriously, it's not even yeah. raining. You just put those suckers on to the other bag. Yeah, I love it. Um, so I have a question. Um, these two bikes are really huge to me. I'm five two. Yep. Uh, so I don't see how people could ride rackless that are riding fifty bikes, yeah, so right? I mean, yeah, that's yeah, the that, only solution. Yeah, you're yeah, going to have that rack. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, my partner Nam is also five foot two, and uh, yeah, we have we end up we're able to we're able to run the front bag without a rack actually. Just we just raise our handlebars way up. And uh, uh, and the rear the rear we have to use a, a bag support so it doesn't like rub, rub the rear tire. Mm -hmm. And there's um, not space on my bike to really support the space the back. Right, yeah, all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So like uh, like That's mini like mini things. bag supports like mm -hmm. yeah like these yeah. like these mm -hmm. like neato like mini bag supports these are awesome for that yeah. because you you wouldn't want to put all your weight directly <laughs> on them they're not rated for that. 
but if it's spaced out between like the handlebar, like if you're mounted to the top of the handlebar and just using the bag support to keep the, the bag off the wheel, I mean, you're, you're, adding, you're, you're adding less than a pound to your bike yeah. by putting those bag supports on. And you're gaining a lot of stability in your load, not shifting side to side and, and things like that. And what I always, I like to stress, like I love panniers for the fact that you don't have to, they're big stuff sacks essentially, so you don't have to really like jam your stuff in there a lot like you do with some of these other setups, but mm -hmm. a lot of the terrain that you end up encountering, like panniers just get caught on, like these these are, these new designs are, are really cool that Martina did with the, the Sonoran panniers, is that what they call it? The Sonoran panniers because they're designed to be a little bit more compact and like close to the bike rather than like a more traditional low rider which sticks out a little bit more. So if you get into some like single track or things like that, like before you even know it, you're on the ground because just something, just on the side of the trail, just decided to grab your pannier and just like, you know, pile drive you into the ground. Like, what happened? How did that even, what, where did I even crash? So since I need a rack, I just carry my equipment. Yeah, I need to ride over three single tracks. Yeah, so, so yeah, that, that, would be the, that would be the rack, thing to do. If you're gonna have a rack, then use it. Yeah. No, the, in the back, yeah, the back, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna have a rack yeah. Yeah. You have a no. See, I, I find, I also write small frames, but... I'm looking for something. Oh, well, just oh, yes, so see if you're a small yeah. size panier. Uh, so, it, it really doesn't affect the handling of the bike. It rides much so, better if you keep the weight down low. So, so what happened with like rear loading in the 70s somehow became like the thing to do. That was me. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it, it's, <laughs> I'm like, and I don't know if you have a, a different take on this, rear loaders, but I mean, I, I started out touring rear loaded. I actually started out touring like wicked rear loaded with a extra cycle with like yeah. trash bags strapped to it, but <laughs> which is a terrible setup but the uh, uh but you know you have all of that like swing in the back of the bike and your rear tire wears out really really quick because not only your actual weight is is on the rear rear wheel but it's all of your packed weight also so it just makes the bike like just handle terribly you don't have any weight up front and uh like the french knew it all along like 100 years ago the french were loading their bikes in the front and somehow in the 70s for i think it was like blackburn made they were like they were like the rack maker and the bag maker in the 70s and they rear loaded all those bikes and it's just not like if you've never front loaded your bike and you're like a rear loading type of per like i highly recommend trying the front load you're because gonna tell me i'm gonna make it up those hills and stop walking oh i'm bike. telling you it, okay. it makes it makes it it makes it so much like in all, in all seriousness that, that it makes such a huge difference to be pushing your weight rather than pulling it and it makes your bike handle better it distributes the weight evenly and uh, and it, you'll you'll be very surprised with how much better your bike. And I can just send a wide path too climb. and feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. I like climbing. I find it way more fun descending. <laughs> yeah. Front. yeah. I mean, because it just it yeah. yeah it just kind of takes your, the whole thing takes better. Your yeah, you're, you're just able to balance your weight so much better on the bicycle. Yeah. And your and and that's really what it comes down to when you're packing. It's it's just balancing the weight, like making sure everything just feels feels right. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any other? Questions from women. Can you expand that a little farther to the handling? I mean, you're not talking about don't rear load it anymore, front load everything? Or how do you, what, what causes a wobble? Can you mention the wobble on your setup? We'd need Matt in the room. I mean, I'm sure that you can give that tutorial too. Yeah. But the, the wobbling comes from your, your, a lot of the times you're, the wobbling, the wobbling is going to come from your weight being further away from the bike. So a lot of racks, uh, if set up improperly, uh, uh, will like jettison the weight like way out here or like, or like way forward. And you know, the closer you can keep everything to the frame, the less wobble you're going to get because it's less flex on the struts of the racks and flex where, you know, where it meets the, the eyelets on your, on your frame and whatnot. And so that's one thing, just keeping everything tighter in. And you'll find, like on a rackless setup, you'll oftentimes have way less wobble than some, and like a setup with panniers and things like that, just because there's less variables to flex while the bike is interacting with the terrain. Um, front loading is going to make your bike, I mean, depending upon how evenly it's, it's, it's loaded, like you could have like a bunch of weight in like one pannier and then like nothing in the other. So it's like you want to make sure everything, again, make sure everything's spread evenly. Um, uh, you know how tight your headset is a factor in that too and there's been a lot of you've probably all heard of like the low trail you know uh, low trail is like a big like is like a hot term for like the past few years still is 
and low trail just it, uh, is just like in layman's terms is just a way to pre-design the bike for a front load, and so it's going to work better with the front load than it would if it didn't have any any anything on it at all. And I find that to be really cool because very few people now are actually leave, are actually riding their bikes without some sort of load on them. You know, if I always look at somebody's bike and they're like, oh, well, I'm going on like a oh, like a like a 50 mile gravel dirt road ride or whatever. And you look and they only have like a little saddle bag. And you're like, you're not going anywhere with that. Like, you, <laughs> and if you do, like you're 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 not having fun. You know, so you got to have at least like. You know, at least like something like this, every ride you go on. Otherwise, you don't have like a change of clothes, like you don't have a jacket, you don't have like snacks and like, you know, whatever else, like a, whatever else you want to keep in there to have a good time. Uh, and so, um, so oftentimes like a low trail bike that's designed for a front load is something that you're going to be riding with every day anyway. Uh, what I found between like low trail and just like normal geometry like the differences, you'd have to be like such like a connoisseur to like actually feel the differences between those two geometries in my opinion, that it's just null and void, like whatever, just load whatever bike you have front and you'll, you'll, you'll reap the benefits. Um, I was wondering if you had any self camping tips here, especially within 50 miles of a major metropolitan area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, you, they, you, you guys probably have better uh, experience camping in your cities since yeah. I'm, I'm a small town. Sure. We, just get out. Yeah. <laughs> we don't really do have to do much self camping because mm. we're around a lot of BLM and and Forest Service jurisdiction, yeah, um, and and we try really hard because of fires to just not. to <laughs> not and and when we're dispersed camping we don't okay. do fires. So, um, that's like. They, that's our L and T stuff, um, and that's really. I mean, I I don't know if that's unique to the North Cascades or the Cascade area, but that's kind of how we follow suit. Yeah, yeah. we have a lot of like really ferocious fires. Oh, gotcha. So yeah, are you from? The, are you it's not worth it. Yeah, I'm from. The yeah, that, that's I, the, I feel like yeah. a, a total asshole so if I started a forest fire. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I find it really, I find it really, really funny. It's like I, I find it really ironic that like. Like fire, of course, like that's that's what like propelled us to being where we are now. Like that was like the first taste of of, of you know uh, of what we could become as far as civilization goes. And now we're not allowed to have them. Yeah, you know, I like, like that's pretty weird. You know, if you think of, like think about that, like that's where we're at right now. And uh, and with just cause, like the West Coast is is just it's like a tinderbox. And it's really it's really sad out. Uh, it's beautiful, but really sad. And it, you know, no rain makes great bike touring weather. Uh, so you know, I say go out there while you can. It's really nice. Yeah. I'm but uh, <laughs> but like around around <laughs> here, it's really cool because you know we, we don't have BLM, we don't have national forest. But yeah, the stealth camp camping options are really you know because people don't generally like the East Coast isn't really known for its outdoor opportunities, and they're not really taken advantage of. You know, like we have in our hometown. In in Connecticut, we have a beautiful state forest that no one goes to. It's all we have it all to ourselves. Anytime we want to use it, and we're the only people out there. We could do whatever we want, you know. And uh, and so, um, yeah, like finding uh, finding state forest, public land. Like there's public land apps that you can look at and see like where state land. Like you know, private property is one. Like I don't respect private property. I don't think that anybody really should. Um, it's, it's so stupid. And so, uh, and so, like people who do, who are like really like jacked up about their private property, like that's the wrong business. That's their own private business. So you know, you gotta. I, I always, but you're inevitably like the good routes. You're gonna hit a little bit of private property, and it's just all about being like respectful, you know. And yeah. and you know, I, I that's that's just like the, uh, I guess like the pedagogy I'll go into like my tours and whatnot. Wherever I'm going, it's just being really, really respectful. Like every campsite that I that I visit, no matter if I have a fire or not, that when I leave, it looks like I wasn't even there. You know, uh, I'll, I'll be you know move the you know, move the rocks back to where I found them. You know, cover everything up, just make it look pristine again, like you were never there. And it's like a fun game, even like oh, I was just I, I you would never know I was just here. I just have you ever really knocked on someone's door like hey, can I 
you should. No, I, 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 I always think I always like I always think it's better to like ask for beg for forgiveness than to, than to ask. I get it. What is it? Like, ask permission. I've done that. I've definitely gone the opposite. We've definitely inquired with ranchers and stuff if okay. we can pitch yeah. camp and every people are so kind. They are for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. They're not on the East Coast. Right? I have a <laughs> West West Coasters are so kind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a follow up question with the no fire thing. What kind of Cooking stuff. What, what's your cooking stuff like? If you're going ultra lightweight, it's, I have a bunch of different ones, but I don't know really. I don't have a dial. What's ideal? So I'm just curious what you guys use. I use the Snow Peak Giga. Love it. Is that like a gas stove? It's it's isobutane. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I love the ISO and. Uh, one thing that we just encountered doing the Great Divide was that there was burn bans uh, along a long section of it. So alcohol was actually banned. Uh, basically, if you're in the backcountry, you can't use anything that does, or you're asked not to use anything that doesn't have an on and off switch. Um, so, I mean, again, it's a, it is a tinder box. It's crazy. We were riding, like, full face cover through fire areas because the smoke was so bad. So you cancel a whole event because Yeah. Like so we tried to respect that and then we also, because we were four people and we had not planned ahead, we had one isobutane and one like um, little alcohol stove and we were just like really hyper aware. Like we, when we did end up using the alcohol stove, we brought all of our water, water bottles right there and we would take like um, aluminum foil that we were carrying other things in and just make as big a pad as possible so that the if there were sparks it had like um, an area around it that created some safety and we were just hyper vigilant. Wow. Yeah. On the self camping this is something I just listen to a lot. Um, I kind of have like this crush on like professional crush on like Eric Nolan. Yeah. Who is like a self camp. It doesn't have to be self well, yeah, I mean, it's not creepy though. Like, I like super stalked him once, and it was really creepy. And it was weird, but he. Just was Anyways, he's still on video. Um, it's fine. Hey, uh, uh, he's just like the coolest human. So, anyways, I think it was hard for me when I was. I didn't really get to like his level. No way. No. But anyways, what was hard was finding a tent that's earth tone because everything is yeah. like orange and red. I have a yellow. Oh no, I have. So. I have suggestions. So yeah. So the best one, like the next one I got, there's a green cover, but it's like. It's not bright green, but it's not earth green. Um, Hillebird, they're heavy, but they okay. make really one. The other thing that I've been getting into is hammocking. And like um, I the sub six Eno stuff, it's, you literally don't even know it's there. It's so light and they've got the Dyneema cording and everything and it's just totally bomb. Um, and it's like dark green and it's amazing. And like you put it up somewhere and we were even where people knew we were and they like had a hard time like finding it. So like if you can hammock too, I'm like all for this like future of camping. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, if there's trees, I know there's a lot of places that don't. The the trees. That yeah. don't have yeah. trees. All them just make, the biggest mistake I see people make with hammocks is they think they don't need anything to insulate their underside. Oh, yeah, yeah, you need insulate. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's like like people think, oh, I can just pack this hammock in like a blanket and I'm set. <laughs> like it doesn't matter if it's totally if it's like midsummer, you're gonna you're gonna yeah. get out of it. You know, it's definitely yeah. insulation, but so, uh, yeah, yeah. there's ways around that too. We, that's a whole nother. Whole nother. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's yeah. Earth tones, earth tones for everything. Yeah. And if you're digging, a, if you're if you're around, if you're in a place where you can have, or you know, in a place where fire isn't illegal, you could uh, uh, make make sure you dig up a hole to have your fire in. And uh, so just dig that hole like nice and deep so that it, it only the fire only comes up like halfway out of it, and just keep it like a manageable size. And then if you do hear somebody coming. You could kick the dirt right over just, the fire. Just sit on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to do it. Yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah. So the fire goes out immediately. You, have to, you just kick the dirt over. You okay. It's like you're never there. Yeah. Tent? I have a tarp that's oh. earth tone. Yeah, yeah. tarps. Tarp it. Um, like, yeah, tarps are, I'm oh, sorry to interject. Yeah, tarp, just really quick. Tarps, that shows that you're serious. You're not a hobbyist. If you're in a tent, then you're a weekend. Oh, and, and with that, I think that it's, it's time. Yeah. Um, one. Nam in the back is doing a great job of letting us know to wrap it up. We actually have all the 
all the time in the world. So maybe, <laughs> maybe folks who have questions, feel free yeah, to feel free hang. Yeah, hang, yeah. Um, if anybody else wants to leave, yeah, we can, yeah. we can go. I would also... <laughs> oh, sorry, go I would love uh, maybe after this question to hear from more of the ladies in the room to hear if you guys have specific questions. Yeah. Wait, have you, how does the three of you feel about Bob Trailer? I know it's a poll as a single word for that. Yeah. Voice, but how do you feel about <laughs> Have you had any experiences? I've, I've only used it on the road. Like, I've never done. That was, the, that was really the first form of like bike packing was Bob Trailer. I, I recall in the late 90s and early 2000s, I was living in Durango, Colorado. We would use them for trail maintenance and things. But I would also, like, if I thought like a novel idea to like throw your camp gear, your, your bike, your backpacking backpack in the back, back of the bottom and take it off. And it, was, it was like cool for the time, but you, that like lag and acceleration and it, you're it's not you're not really doing yourself any favors with like how well the bike like it's cool that you can unclip it like when you get to camp and then do like some hot laps around camp on your unloaded bike but uh, <laughs> aside from that it doesn't it doesn't really uh, doesn't make unload hot laps. yeah unload hot laps <laughs> yeah I wouldn't recommend it I, there are better options I should say like uh, packing the stuff on your bike is indeed a better option in my experience yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Right there. Yeah. So that was a little different. They were collecting trash out of all the green spots they went through when they traveled across the U.S. So they like collected like a toilet and like that barrel. So they had a bob because they did like tons and tons of yeah. garbage along the way. So that was yeah. a little unique. Good for that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.